Hello everyone, this will be the King Knight tutorial for Cyclone Sierra. This stage has one banger of a theme, and it demands your respect. And at the later portion of this first playthrough, I'm actually not going to say anything at all, because I'm going to be talking over what happens uh, at every other point in this video. And that's because the last room is an auto-scroller, but everything in the room is already loaded, including these tornadoes that allow you to reach the goal ring. Although I'll be going back over this room to show off some better movement, the primary focus of this video will be the auto-scroller skip. I'll be showing both the low percent variation and the any percent version that actually uses charge bash plus turncoat. But for now, listen carefully. And focus on my inputs. For this first portion of the room, you're going to do a bash roll, and then you're going to jump and then do another bash roll, but tap left very, very slightly at the end of it so that you don't bonk into the wall. You can then jump up and make your way toward the tornado, and when you do a bash roll here, try and cut it off early so that you can start charging your battery bash. It's more important that you get a battery bash basically as soon as you start falling down into this pit. You could just bash left and hit the tornado, but since you have Battery Brigandine, this is the trickier movement that will save you a little bit more time. Try and Battery Bash as soon as possible. You'll hit the right wall, barely make it up over the ledge. Don't advance too far to the right early, otherwise the Bone Clang will keep backing up. Bash and bounce off of him, and then start charging a Battery Brigandine bash to the right. To bait this dive drake, make sure you're doing a full jump followed by a bash roll, otherwise he'll back up and you'll fall on top of it. The rest of the movement in this room ain't too bad, barring this Carter jump. Don't fail it, or you'll die! Before I show off what you do in this room completely blind, I figured I'd show off what exactly it is that you're doing, so that you know which tornadoes you're shooting for and why we're doing the inputs that we're doing here. So first you're going into this blue one, and then you're going all the way to the right into this lavender one. After you come out of the other lavender one, you're going to try and bash at the apex of your jump, so you kind of have to have a feel for how high you are without being able to see it. After you bash against the wall, you're going to immediately hold right. and that barely gets you up into that blue one. This blue one will consistently be in the same spot, so long as you've done all the other movement in the room correctly. And from here, you would just be gently tapping right after you hear yourself pop out of it. And then you would hold left and you would reach the goal ring. So now I'm going to do the trick in its entirety. You go up here, you grab the ladder. I like to jump and listen for my feet landing. I jump across this gap, then thirst bash, hold right, bash, Bash the top, hold right, gentle tap right, hold left. I'm going to link all three of these pictures in the description, but here is what the entire last room looks like. I took some time to clip it all together and I also drew out the path that you're taking throughout this last room. And again, if you need to study it for longer, there will be links in the description. Also, Breadpan tells me that he actually does a left charge bash from that last blue tornado on the right to get to the goal ring as well, if you wanted to try and save a little bit more time. So this time around, instead of using the last blue tornado to hit the goal ring, I'm actually going to do a Carter jump off of the Lavender Tornado. Uh, and you actually only have to do it straight up, because it's directly above you. And all you have to do is a charged battery up bash off the left one with a well-timed with a well-timed uh, turncoat use. Like I said before, there are three pictures because this one is going to be the chart that shows you where you need to be doing your charge bash into turncoat. If you're not confident with your timing in doing this charge bash blindly, I wouldn't recommend it. It only saves you a couple seconds. So that's it for Cyclone Sierra, and yeah, you can save a ton of time by doing that auto scroller skip. I highly encourage you to practice it. Carter Bash in this instance only saves about 3 seconds, so at the very least learn how to do it the low percent way. Anyway, see you next time at Heavyweight Heights. Thanks for watching.